Hi, and a very warm welcome to Sitam Church Online, this being the Youth Cafe. My name is Patrick Kuchio, the Head of Missions at Christ is the Answer Ministries. Now, have you ever been betrayed? What did you do about it? Well, please uh, keep this conversation going right here on our Sitam Church Online platforms as we talk about why to forgive. Well, have you ever been betrayed? Has the pain of betrayal ever hit you so hard that you temporarily lost your sanity or your balance? Have you ever been betrayed to a point where you did not know how to handle that relationship or situations? Well, um, you see, at the very heart of the Christian faith is the word forgiveness. Um, and this word forgiveness is actually the prescription, if you ask me, for dealing with betrayal. Now, you see, betrayal is a very, very real and painful experience. Now, an example is given to us of Jesus Christ on the cross in Luke 23, verse 34. As he hung on the cross, he made one prayer. Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. And the Bible says, and they went on uh, to divide his clothes by casting lots. Now, the kind of betrayal that Jesus Christ suffered, the kind of humiliation that he suffered on his way to the cross and on the cross as he hung there for you and for me, must have been quite something. But for him to make this prayer, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing, was a lesson for us to emulate as his followers that the best prescription, the best approach to dealing with betrayal, however deep, is to forgive. But you see, you're telling me, but, but Pastor, that was Jesus. This is me. I do not have the grace. I do not have the strength. I do not have the divine capacity to forgive. Well, you see, here is the reality about betrayal. Betrayal is a painful experience. And when you go through betrayal, the first thing to acknowledge, or the first thing to do is to acknowledge the pain that accrues from betrayal. Don't fake it. Don't pretend you're not experiencing the pain and the heartache. Acknowledge the pain that comes from betrayal because it is a painful thing when a very close relation turns their back on you. It takes a toll on anyone. If it took a toll on the Son of God, Jesus Christ, it is bound to take a toll on you and it is bound to take a toll on me. But the first thing to do is to actually acknowledge the pain that flows from betrayal. You see, some people have said, you don't need to get uh, even. You don't, I mean, you don't need to get mad, just get even. This is a fact. Betrayal will unsettle us, betrayal will hurt us, betrayal in some cases, extreme cases, will damage us. It takes a toll on us. And the first thing for us to do when we go through any form of betrayal is to acknowledge the pain that flows from it. You see, once you and I acknowledge the pain that flows from an act of betrayal, then and only then do we find the strength, the fortitude, the wherewithal 
to deal with the pain. So the first thing is for us to acknowledge the pain. But the second thing for us to do is to turn to the healer. To turn to the healer for healing. You see, some people have been persuaded that time heals. It's been said that time heals. But I just came to challenge that belief that time heals. Time is not a healer. God is the healer. There are people who have left their sense of pain and heartache in abeyance, hoping that time will bring about healing. It is true that God works with time, that God uses time. But when you remove God from the equation, there is no guarantee that time in itself is a healer because time is neutral. But there is a God who heals. There is a God who has the balm of, he's been referred to the balm of Gilead. When he applies his healing salve, his healing solution to our pain, we begin to receive healing. But God must be involved in the equation. So when you and I acknowledge our pain, it does something. It creates in us the desire to seek for help. There are many people who go through life, there are many people who are going through life, you're probably listening to me, and you, not, you do not see a desire, you do not see a need for your problem, which is pain or heartache. Probably the reason why you do not see a need to seek help is because you have not acknowledged in the first place that you are hurting and that you're going through a painful experience. You see, it's after that we acknowledge that we are going through a painful experience accruing from an act of betrayal that we seek for a solution. My prayer is that you will not seek for a solution in the wrong places or in the wrong people, but that you will seek a solution to the pain in the right person. His name is Jesus. He's the balm of Gilead. You see, God cannot ask you and I to do something which he has not demonstrated. He demonstrated to us, his followers, that it is possible for us to forgive even the worst act of betrayal. Can you imagine being betrayed to the point of death? Can you imagine that? Being betrayed to the point of death. Some of us have been betrayed for a few things. You've been betrayed, but it hasn't necessarily led you to the point of death. The Son of God, as we begin to approach this Easter break, this Easter season, the Son of God was betrayed to the point of death. But on the cross, he demonstrated that it is possible to even forgive when you are at your most vulnerable point, at your weakest moment. You know why? Because God can become your strength to forgive. Now you see, forgiveness does a number of things. Forgiveness liberates. When, because you're asking, why should I forgive? Forgiveness liberates. It doesn't liberate the offender. It liberates the offended. Forgiveness does not necessarily liberate the offender. In most cases, the offender has moved on with life, but you are reeling in the pain that has accrued from the act of betrayal. Someone put it this way, to withhold forgiveness and expect that it will have an effect on the offender is like to take poison and expect that the person who offended you would die. It doesn't work. Withholding forgiveness, withholding forgiveness does not benefit the offended or the offender in any way. It doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't. So I came to encourage you. Might you be going through a painful experience that resulted or has is, is from a result 
of an act of betrayal. You know what? Forgive. Because forgiveness liberates. Forgiveness does not just liberate the offended, but forgiveness releases you from the prison of bitterness. Forgiveness releases you from the prison of bitterness. There are many who appear like they are walking free, they appear like they are not chained, but they are actually living in confinement. They are living in prison, a prison of bitterness. That prison is worse than any maximum security prison, the prison of bitterness. You see, it's normal to feel bitter when you've been betrayed. It is natural to feel bitter when you've been betrayed. It is natural to feel bitter when pain has been inflicted on you unfairly. It is normal and natural to feel bitter. However, you don't have to live in that state of bitterness perpetually. Absolutely not. It is God's will that you live a freed life. Jesus Christ died a free man. He may have been put on the cross. He may have been crucified on the cross, but he died a free man because he said, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. My encouragement to us, my challenge to us is that you don't have to walk through life carrying unnecessary burdens because when you forgive, it doesn't just liberate the offended, it doesn't just free you from the prison of bitterness, but it invites what comes, the healing virtue of God to flow your way. There are many people who live without healing for one simple reason. They have not begun any step on the journey to forgiveness. You see, once you acknowledge your pain, you seek for healing, not in people or in places or in pleasure, but in the person called Jesus, you invite him to heal. You invite him to attend to your pain and to your heartache. And you know what? He's, an, he's excellent at doing that. He did that on the cross, but he is no longer on the cross. He's doing that today. He'll do it tomorrow. He'll keep on doing it. He is the healer. You see, he's the wounded healer. He is the only person who, while at his most vulnerable point of death, could offer even life to the thief that had been crucified alongside him. When he turned to him and told him, this day you shall be in paradise with me. You see, ladies and gentlemen, why must we forgive? It is a divine thing to forgive. It is divine. As followers of Jesus, God has invited us onto this journey. I agree with whoever said that it is, to err is normal, but to forgive is divine. To err is normal, but to forgive is divine. God can grant you the divine capacity to forgive regardless of what act of betrayal you've been through. Whether you've been betrayed by a business associate, whether you've been betrayed by a family member, whether you've been betrayed by a child, whether you've been betrayed by a guardian, a parent, whether you've been betrayed by a spouse, whether you've been betrayed at work, it doesn't matter the form or fashion this betrayal has taken. I have news for you. It is possible for God to heal you of every pain that is flowing from that act of betrayal. And as we prepare for Easter, let's be reminded that there is no act of betrayal for which his blood cannot cater for. There is no depth of pain for which his stripes cannot heal. God 
is more than willing to free you this day. Well, let's keep this conversation going. Um, I would like to hear how you're dealing with the acts of betrayal that you've been through, or maybe you're going through a struggle of betrayal. Let's engage, let's keep this conversation going on our social media platforms, on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter, and please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Let's keep this conversation going on Sitam Church Online. Once again, my name is Patrick Cuccio. This is the Youth Cafe right here on Sitam Church Online. The Lord bless you and live a free life.